Squire Jonathan here, and welcome to Learn to Playthrough. Today we're going to be setting up Escape the Dark Castle. Now before we set up, the first thing we got to do is emptying the box. So let's go and get the box open here, and get all the components out and onto the desk, so we can go and do a playthrough. We got ourselves the rule book, we'll go ahead and put that off to the side. And as you notice right away, we got ourselves some white strips of paper here that I've placed underneath the cards. And during the unboxing video, you probably noticed that I had a hard time getting the cards out. And especially these larger cards, the side slot is only about half deep. So trying to get all those cards out, it's going to take you several times. So I went ahead and cut down some paper strips and put them underneath there for a nice easy pull out. There we go. We got ourselves the item cards, pad of paper, some pencils, and finally the dice. So let's go and get the box cover back on. And we'll put it off to the side here. There we go. Alright, now that we're done emptying the box, let's go ahead and set up. In the rule book on page 5 in the section Setting Up the Game, there are three steps for setting up Escape the Dark Castle. Step 1, create the castle. Step 2, choose characters. And Step 3, set health points. So let's go ahead and begin with Step 1, create the castle. In step one, create the castle, there are five bullets for creating the castle. First bullet, shuffle the chapter cards and deal 15 face down to form the castle deck. So the chapter cards are in this grouping of large cards here. We'll go ahead and remove the white paper. Now there's four different types in here. And we got the character cards. And then we got the boss cards, and here are the chapter cards, and this is the start card. Now there are 53 chapter cards in this Kickstarter version that we got. There's 45 standard edition and 8 Kickstarter cards. Now since this is the learn phase of learn to play through, we're going to go ahead and remove those 8 Kickstarter cards. And you remember how to identify them? In the bottom left hand corner of the picture is the code DCKS-CH01, which stands for Dark Castle Kickstarter-Chapter Card 01. So we'll go ahead and remove these Kickstarter cards and just put them off to the side. And then we'll take the remaining 45 standard edition cards and we'll go ahead and give them a shuffle. Now I'm shuffling what's called the Riffle Shuffle, and there was a group of people that made a shuffle model that said Riffle cards seven times in order to randomize them thoroughly. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle them at least seven times. Now if you shuffle more than seven times, that doesn't really matter, as long as it gets to seven so you go ahead and randomize them thoroughly. Alright, then when we're done shuffling them, we're going to go ahead and draw it 15 cards. Now there are 45 cards in here, and divisible by 15, that means that every three cards, you'll go ahead and draw one card. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and the last card makes 15. So go ahead and take the other 30 cards and just put them off to the side. And then we'll go ahead and take the 15 chapter cards here and we'll go ahead and give them a little bit of a shuffle. And this is the start of the castle deck. Now we go on to the second bullet. Shuffle the boss cards and place one face down underneath the castle deck. So we go ahead and get our 
boss cards, and there are five boss cards. Three are standard edition, and two are the Kickstarter versions. Now, since this is the learn phase of learn to play through, we're going to go ahead and remove those Kickstarter cards. And how to tell them is that in the bottom left hand corner is that code that says DCKS-BC01. Now the second boss card for the Kickstarter is the Shapeshifter and if you look at that code, the code is actually wrong. So I don't know if it just happened to be the wrong game that this card came in or if it came in all of the games, but it reads DCSE-BC02 and it should read DCKS-BC02 since it is a Kickstarter card. So we're going to go ahead and take these two cards and put them off to the side and then we'll go ahead and take the remaining three boss cards and just give them a shuffle here and we'll see which ones that we're going to get and we'll go with this one. Take the other two boss cards, put them off to the side and then we'll go ahead and take this boss card and we put it at the bottom of the castle deck. So then we go to the third bullet, place the start card on top of the castle deck with the image of the castle face up. So there's the image of the dark castle and we'll go ahead and put it right here on top of the castle deck. And now the castle deck is complete. Now there's no more additional information or anything to that. So that one's done, and now we move on to the fourth bullet. Shuffle the item card deck and place it face down to the right of the castle deck. So these are your item cards. Go ahead and remove the white piece of paper. And there are 36 item cards in here, 35 of the standard edition, and one Kickstarter card. Now there are 19 different types in here, ranging from one to six copies. So we got partially rotten apple, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have a infested cheese wheel, and there's one of them. And as I said before, this is the learn phase of learn to play through. So we're going to go ahead and remove the Kickstarter card, which is the golden axe. And remember how to tell on this one also, you just look at the code down here, which reads DCKS-IC01, which stands for Dark Castle Kickstarter dash item card 01. So we'll go ahead and take that and put that off to the side. Now the item card for Kickstarter also has a die associated with it. So here's the golden axe die and we'll go ahead and place that off to the side also. Then we're going to go ahead and shuffle the cards. Now the shuffle model is going to be really helpful for this one because there are multiple cards in here. So we need to riffle the cards seven times in order to randomize them thoroughly. There's four, five, six, and seven. All right, now we go and just take those and we'll put them to the right of the castle deck. Then we come to the last bullet, the fifth bullet. Place the chapter dice in a pool above the castle deck. Now all of these black dice are the chapter dice. Take the white dice over here. There's the chapter dice. And that will end the fifth bullet. There's no more additional information or anything else. So that will do it for that. So that's going to complete step one, create the castle. Let's go ahead and move on to Step two, choose characters. Next, you're going to go ahead and you're going to find the character die with it. So here's the cook's die. So she's got might as her strong one. And then we're looking for Taylor. Yep, here's Taylor. And Taylor's got cunning as the strong one there. And then we'll go ahead and take the rest of the dice and put them off to the side. So that's going to complete step two, choose characters. Let's go ahead and move on to the final step. Step three, set health points.
Now when you're playing the game and you're playing it solo with just one player, remember it says that you have to pick two character cards. And if you're playing with two players, then each player will choose one character card. So with the health points, or HP as they call them, if there's one or two players, then each of the characters will have 18 hit points each. If there's three players, it'll be 14 hit points, and if there's four players, it'll be 12 hit points. Now, the characters are going to gain and lose HPs throughout the game, but remember, they can never exceed their starting hit points. So this is where the pad of paper comes in, because you're going to do, be doing a lot of scribbling and writing and scribbling and writing for the different hit points. So we get the pad of paper and the pencils that Themeborn has provided for us. And we got Cook and Taylor. And each of them start with 18 hit points. Alright. Okay, well that's going to be it for setting up Escape the Dark Castle. As a recap here, we got Cook, who's pretty strong on the might, but very weak on wisdom. Taylor, very strong on cunning, but very weak on might. We got our castle deck all made up with a boss card, 15 chapter cards, and a starting card. Got our item decks, got our chapter dice. We got Cook and Taylor with 18 hit points each. And there we go. Setup is complete. And now, the introduction. Wrongfully incarcerated in the depths of the Dark Castle, you and your fellow prisoner now embark on a desperate quest to escape. However, the castle is a treacherous place filled with horrors, traps, and challenges. You and your fellow prisoner are going to have to overcome every obstacle the Dark Castle throws at you while keeping alive. If you can keep alive through the maze of passageways and rooms, you both escape the Dark Castle and make your way to freedom. However, if the Dark Castle takes any one of your lives, the remaining prisoner is recaptured, dragged back to their former cell, where they shall wait till they find another day to escape. Well, alright, this concludes the setup and introduction for Escape the Dark Castle. Now let's go ahead and learn to play through Escape the Dark Castle. Hello there, and welcome back as we're about to Escape the Dark Castle. Now just a reminder that this is the first playthrough of Escape the Dark Castle, so it's going to be the learn phase of learn to play through. So we're going to take it nice and easy, so just sit back and relax. So let's go ahead and get this game going to see who wins, whether it's the prisoners to freedom or the Dark Castle back to imprisonment. And that's a good question, so how do they win? In the rule book on page 3 in the section, the object of the game, in the second paragraph, the object of the game is to overcome every card in the castle deck while keeping everyone in your group alive. If you do this, you all escape the dark castle and win the game together. However, if anyone dies along the way, the game ends immediately and you must try again. So there you have it. That's how you win the game. So now, let's go ahead and start and learn to play through Escape the Dark Castle. Okay, well the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of house cleaning here. So we're going to move some things around. We'll get our score sheet of 18 hit points each for the cook and the tailor. Put our item cards up a little bit and move our castle deck over here as we got discarding to put over here and what we're battling is going to go right here. So in the rule book on page 6 in the section playing the game this is how we start off the game with our turn orders and the chapter cards. So the first thing we do is start with the start card. 
Turn over to begin. After years of incarceration in the depths of the dark castle, you finally break free of your cell. In a small stone room adjoining the cell block stands an old wooden chest. The lock is open. Draw an item card per player now. Alright, so when you draw the item cards, in the rule book on page 7 is the section item cards. And it talks about the item cards when you draw your item cards, whether something tells you to draw it, or if you complete and win a combat, you get to draw one item card. So you're going to go ahead and draw the item card, and you're going to place it in a character pool. So you don't draw one card and say, this one is only going to the cook. So the first one we have here is a partially rotten apple. Discard to restore one hit point to your character. Okay, then the next one is Everescent Evasion Potion. When you would take damage, discard to avoid that damage. Okay, very good. So, who's going to want what? So, Taylor's going to go ahead and take the Everescent Evasion, and Cook will take the Partially Rotten Apple. Now, the item cards, if they want to trade the item cards, then they can only do that after a chapter card is completed. If they want to use an item card, they can use it anytime they want. So now we go ahead and finish off the rest of our start card. You hear footsteps approaching. You must not linger here. You make for the exit, slipping away and disappearing into the darkness. Turn the first chapter card now. And now we're going to go ahead and begin with turn one. So now we decide who is going to be the person that turns the chapter card. Or more or less, who's going to be the character that is going to turn the chapter card. And this is going to represent either opening a door, walking down a passageway, finding someone somewhere. So since Cook has the partially rotten apple for hit points, she's going to go ahead and go first. Go ahead and draw the first chapter card, and we get uh, two ugly looking mugs standing in an archway. You turn a corner and step right into the path of two guards. They exchange a puzzled look, then lunge to restrain you. As a group, choose one option. Either flee, you force your way past them, but not before taking several glancing blows. Each player loses one hit point. Or, fight, begin combat. So Taylor and Cook look at each other really quick and think, you know what, we need to get out of this dark castle. We're just going to go ahead and push past them. So they're going to go ahead and flee, but as they flee, they each take one hit point of damage, so they now both drop down to 17 hit points. Okay, so that's going to end turn one. Now we move on to turn two. So we're walking down the passageway. There's 17 hit points each. And Cook decides to still go ahead and lead the two. So we go to the next chapter card and we get... Oh, some guy's been shot with arrows. From the darkness ahead, an arrow whistles past your ear. Before you can react, another buries itself into your shoulder, and you slump against the wall in agony. Ah! You lose two hit points. Oh, that's not good. So Cook's going to lose two hit points, dropping her down to 15. But like it says, you can use your item cards whenever you want, so we'll go ahead and discard the partially rotten apple, and now Cook is going to go back up to 16. We finish off and it says, Cautiously creeping along the passage, you find a man's body riddled with arrows. There is no sign of the attackers, so you check to see if he was carrying anything of value. Draw an item card. Excellent. We get a brew of might. It's a potion. Discard to apply a single might at any time. Excellent. Alright, well that's going to end turn two.
Let's go ahead and move on to turn three. So Cook comes back here as they're walking down the passageway. Now Taylor has 17 and Cook has 16 hit points. So Taylor's going to go ahead and move up and take the lead on this one. So we go ahead and take the chapter card and we draw it and we get, oh, some screaming looking creature. You hear a scream from behind and turn around too late to avoid the clutches of a lurching ghoul. As a group, choose one option. You may flee, you get away, but you, which is represented by Taylor, because Taylor's the one that went ahead and lead the group, will lose two hit points shaking off the ghoul. Or you're going to fight and begin combat. Now the ghoul here has special combat that says combat special. You, which refers to Taylor, are so fear struck that any wisdom you roll this chapter has no effect. And that is bad because it's saying wisdom and this is the symbol for wisdom so that if Taylor rolls a wisdom it won't be effective. So once again they look at each other and say we want to just get out of here so we're gonna go ahead and flee. So you which refers to Taylor loses two hit points. So Taylor is now down to 15. So we got Cook at 16 and Taylor at 15. Okay, well that is going to end turn three. So let's go ahead and move on to turn four. So we go ahead and look at Cook is at 16, Taylor's at 15. So Cook is now going to go ahead and take the lead. Now, not all the time these chapter cards are bad, but most of the time the chapter cards are bad. So you might get an item card, but you lost a hit point. In this case, you know, you lost hit points and then it's you don't really know what's going to happen. So Cook's going to go ahead and take the lead and we draw the card and we get, ooh, looks like a swarm of bats coming at you. Without warning, a swarm of giant bats burst into the passageway. You can only cower beneath the overwhelming blur of wing and fang. As the bats swarm past, each player in turn must roll their character dice along with three chapter dice. After rolling a player who loses one hit point for each chapter dice that matches their character dice. If a player rolls a double or rolls no matches, they are unharmed by the bats. Okay, so Cook was leading it, so Cook's going to go up first. So we take three of the chapter dice, and we take Cook's character die. We go ahead and roll them, and we'll see what happens if he gets a matching, or if you get doubles or nothing. Oh, this is not good. All right, so Cook rolled a mite. And the chapter dice rolled two might. So Cook is going to take two damage and drops from 16 down to 14. Now Taylor is coming up. The bats are swarming at her. She rolled oh, the same thing. She rolled a cunning, and there's two chapter dice that are rolled with cunning, so she takes two damage dropping from 15 down to 13. And that's going to end that one. So that's going to end turn four. Now we move on to turn five. So Cook has got 14, Taylor's got 13, so Cook is going to continue to lead as we go ahead and draw the next chapter card and we get oh, skeletons with swords and shields. This passage takes you past dark, unlocked cells. From inside, the sound of bony hands clutching steel is unmistakable. As a group, choose one option, then begin combat. You can either charge them, and they have a symbol here of like a pawn, or it looks like the silhouette of a kind of like a person. Or you can lure them out. Now, what this means here, it means that how many players or how many characters there are,
that's how many of the chapter dice you will be rolling. So for the first one, for charge them, you'll just end up rolling two chapter dice. But when they attack, they're going to cause two damage on you. For the other one, luring them out, they're going to end up having two of the mites, and then they have this the player symbol, which is two more dice, for a total of four dice. But when they attack, they only deal one point of damage. So we have to decide, how do you want to, to play this? Do you want to charge at them and try and take them down really quick, or lure them out so there's not much damage on you? So they're going to decide that they're going to go ahead and charge them. So what we go ahead and do is we take two dice, because there's the symbol for the players, there's two players, and we're going to go ahead and roll them, and we have a cunning and a wisdom. So now in the rule book on page 8 and 9 is the section for combat, and combat is broken into rounds here, so we're still on turn 5, and now we're going to be broken down into rounds, and the first part of combat is attacking. So our two characters, they're going to go ahead and attack. And if they go ahead and attack, and they roll a cunning and a wisdom, then they're going to kill off the skeletons right away, and the skeletons don't even get to attack them back to cause damage. But if they do not kill the skeletons, then the skeletons get to go ahead and attack. And when they attack, since they did charge them, the skeletons are going to do two points of damage to each character. Okay. Now there's another thing that can happen during combat, and it's called resting. So if the cook had 14 hit points and the tailor only had like 6, then maybe the tailor will rest, and then the cook will go ahead and take on the skeletons by themselves. So we're going to go ahead and attack them and see what happens here. So we go ahead and take the character dice and give them a roll, and we need to get a cunning and a wisdom. First attack. Oh, look at that. Okay, so what's this one? This one's Cook. Cook rolled a double might and Taylor rolled a double wisdom. Okay, well the, the wisdom's gonna take out the wisdom and now the skeletons get to attack. But since they rolled the doubles, there's the shield looking symbol around the doubles. That means that the characters end up blocking the skeletons attack and so they didn't get no damage done. So now we go on to the next round of combat and they're gonna go ahead and attack again but you know what Taylor is gonna say okay you know what I'm pretty close but I'm gonna go ahead and rest this time. So Taylor's gonna go ahead and rest and then Cook is only gonna be the attacker. Now when the skeletons come back to attack they're gonna only attack Cook and not Taylor. So Taylor will get one hit point back, go to 13 to 14, and then she will not get attacked by the skeletons. So let's go ahead and roll and see how Cook does for attacking the skeletons. Oh, okay. Oh, he even got a cunning. All right, so he got a double, she got a double cunning, <laughs> and they had a cunning here, and that means that Cook ends up killing off the skeletons. And even if the skeletons were able to attack back, she rolled doubles along with a shield, so that means that she blocks their attack. So the skeletons are now gone. Now after this happens, after you've defeated any enemy, you're going to draw one item card. And this one item card is for everyone, not per player or per character, it's just one for everyone. And this goes into the character pool, so let's see what we got. We got Liquid Luck Potion. Discard to re-roll your character dice, applying only the second result. All right, well, we got a Brew of Might, which is applying a single might. Or this is a re-roll, and that's to avoid damage. So we're going to go ahead and give this to Cook. And then Taylor went ahead and rested, so she is back up to 14. And now that's going to end turn five. Let's go ahead and go on to turn six. So now we're both at 14 here. 
Uh, Cook has two items and that's all that they can carry. They can only carry two items. They don't have any backpacks or purses or anything like that. They got ragged looking clothes as you can see here so the only thing the way that they can carry stuff is with their hands. So all they have is just two hands. That's all they can carry. Now if they by chance find a weapon that says that it is a two-handed weapon then that is the only item that they can carry as they're using both their hands. So let's go ahead and Cook is going to go ahead and continue to lead as we draw our next chapter card and we get oh some kind of a guy just standing next to a wall. A hooded man approaches. He looks cautiously over his shoulder then whispers, hey asking you you wish to trade? So each player may choose one option. They can trade, discard any item and draw two more, or negotiate. Try to roll a double in one attempt. Success, your silver tongue, pays dividends and draw an item card. Or failure, your primitive appeal falls flat. You get nothing. So Taylor and Cook look at each other, quick discussion. They're like, let's not waste time. Let's go ahead and just give him something and get something from him and let's get going. So they're going to go ahead and just do the trading. They're going to discard any item and draw two more. This is a pretty good deal, I guess. Um, Cook is going to go ahead and discard the Liquid Luck. And then Cook is going to get two more items. He's going to get Ever Vescent Evasion Potion. When you would take damage, discard to avoid that damage. And that's the same thing that Taylor has. And then the second one he's going to have is a, ooh, a decayed blade. It's a weapon, one-handed. Once per round of combat, when you roll wisdom, you may roll again and choose which of the two results to apply. Okay, well, he is or she is not that great at wisdom. She's got a one etching there. Now Taylor is pretty good, so right off the bat, he's going to go ahead and just trade it with um, Taylor. Now Taylor's got to draw two. Now they're all full at the moment, so let's see what we're going to be doing here with stuff. Okay, here we've got one here. Discard to restore two hit points to your character. Okay, now what it says here with items is that if you like put the ever essent evasion potion down and keep the stale loaf bread it doesn't mean that this disappears for this whole turn it still stays there until you guys decide to move on to the next turn and draw the next chapter card so Taylor's gonna go ahead and take this and then she's gonna go ahead and eat the stale loaf of bread and she's gonna restore two hit points so she goes from 14 up to 16 and now she gets to draw one more and we have a cracked axe in combat roll a chapter dice along with your character dice each time you attack apply both results okay well she kinda likes that a little bit better than the decayed blade but this one is a two-handed weapon so we gotta watch out for that because it's gonna be two hands and if she gets something else she won't be able to carry it but she's going to go ahead and get rid of these two items. So she'll drop the Decayed Blade and she'll drop the Everescent Evasion Potion. And now she's going to have the Cracked Axe. So she'll get to roll one of these chapter dice along with her character die when she attacks. So very good. That's going to finish off turn six. Let's go ahead and move on to turn seven and looks like Taylor has more hit points so she's gonna go ahead and take the lead. So let's go ahead and draw our chapter card and we get oh some beast creature. You interrupt a beast man devouring a fresh kill. He raises his head, sinew dangling from his gore smeared mouth, then charges you, which refers to Taylor because Taylor is gonna go ahead and turn the chapter card must try to roll might. Well, that's not good because she only has one might. Or a double in one attempt. Okay. Success. You react quickly and dive aside. Begin combat. Failure. You are slammed to the floor and lose two hit points. Then begin combat. 
All right, well, she's got to go ahead and roll either a mite or doubles. Oh, she got a mite. There's a mite right there. So she dives off to the side, and she does not take any damage. And now we go into combat. So who wants to go ahead and go first? Well, they actually both go first at the same time. So the beast man, he or she gets a might and a cunning chapter dice. And then he gets two and we get a cunning and a wisdom. So they come up here to attack and remember Taylor gets to roll this with the cracked axe. Boom. All right, who got it? All right, Taylor got a block, so she's not going to get any damage. We get one, two, three wisdom, so it takes care of this wisdom, and one cunning, take care of that cunning. She got the block, she gets no damage on her. Poor Cook, though, is going to take two points of damage. Ouch, so Cook is down to 12 now. Taylor is up to 16. All right, well, we're gonna have to keep attacking here. So let's see here, they both come up. And actually, Cook is gonna go ahead and rest. So Taylor is gonna roll the two dice. Oh, she got a block, so she gets no damage. There's a cunning, takes care of this cunning, very good. So she blocks, no damage for her. And she goes, the cook goes up one to 13. And then we got one left there. So just Taylor's gonna go ahead and go for it. Cook is gonna go ahead and rest. Oh, got the mite, got the mite. Takes out the beast man. All right, very good, very good. So, with that, the Beast Man is defeated. And with that, they get one item card, and they're going to get the Replication Stone's Relic. Whenever you roll a single, it counts as two singles of that trait. That is really good, actually. Let's see, take damage, discard to avoid, single. Okay, we're gonna go ahead, uh, no, single might. Oh, geez, that's tough. All right, even though we don't wanna do it, we're gonna discard it. Oh, that's gonna hurt, that's gonna hurt. All right, well, that's gonna end turn seven. So let's go ahead and move on to turn eight. All right, we are on turn eight, and we are halfway there. So they can barely see the light at the end of the tunnel, and they are wanting that freedom. So Taylor is going with 16. I think, uh, I don't think I did that, so I'm um, a little bit unsure if I, uh, added that because of cook resting if not she'll still have 13 but then now she's at 14 and taylor is at 16. so let's go ahead and continue on with turn eight taylor's got 16 so taylor's going to go ahead and flip the chapter card and we get okay looks like some kind of a a drunken guard of some sort we got here oh a drunken guard stops you and demands to know your business he is unsteady on his feet, and his breath is vile. As a group, choose one option. Bribe, discard one item, and he will forget he ever saw you. Misdirect, nominate a player to roll wisdom in one attempt. Success, you befuddle the guard with a riddle and move on. Failure, the guard tries to detain you. You struggle free and escape, but all players lose one hit point during the scuffle. All right, well, Wisdom is not good with Cook, and Taylor, she has three, but oh, they're 
almost good those cards over there. We're gonna go ahead and give up the damage. Slow. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give up the Everescent Invasion potion. So we give him the potion. He then turns away and walks and stumbles away, bouncing off the wall. And that will finish off turn eight. So now we go on to turn nine. So Taylor's still leading here with 16 hit points. So she's going to go ahead and draw the next chapter card. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Oh! Nasty spider looking demonic creature. This chamber is flanked by caves and littered with gnawed bones. A guttural growl rings out as something emerges. As a group, choose one option, then begin combat. Tackle the beast head on, where, remember that is the symbol for how many player characters there are. So there's two, so you'll roll two of the chapter dice, and the creature will deal three points of damage when it attacks. Or use hit and run tactics, where you'll go ahead and have three set dice, and then two of them you'll have to roll for a total of five dice, but it'll only deal two points of damage to you. So what do we want to do? Well, it dealt with the skeletons with the head-on, I believe, so they're going to go ahead and do a head-on attack with this funky-looking spider creature. So we go ahead and take two chapter dice for the spider, keep the roll, and it is too cunning. Very good for Taylor, yeah, pretty good for Cook also. So let's go ahead and do the attack here as we do our first round. And actually, you know what? Taylor's really good at cunning, so she's going to only attack. Cook is going to go ahead and stay back to gain another point for resting. And let's go ahead and just, we'll do that right away so we don't make that mistake again if we did before. So we put, them, put her up to 15. Now, Taylor will go and attack, and we need two cunning. Oh, bingo, both one. All right, single cunnings on both the dice. So that knocks out the funkadelic spider-looking creature. And with that, the creature is gone. And then they get one item card. Everest Innovation Potion. When you would take damage, discard to avoid that damage. So Cook will go ahead and take that back since she gave that up to the drunken guard. And that's going to go ahead and finish off turn 9. Let's go ahead and move on to turn 10. So Taylor is leading on hit points of 16 to 15. So Taylor is going to go ahead and go first. So let's go ahead and draw the chapter card and see what we get. And oh, <laughs> we get another guy with arrows stuck in him. A uh, skeleton form lies slumped in the corner of this dark chamber. Beneath the dust of ages, it still clutches a moldering map. As a group, choose one option. Move on. Something isn't right here. Turn the next chapter card. Or steal map. Nominate a player to roll two wisdom in three attempts. Success, the map leads to a hidden cache, draw two item cards. Failure, the skeleton twitches, then rises from its ancient slumber to punish you, destroying the map in its rage. Begin combat. Well, just like all of the times before, Taylor and Cook look at each other and say, let's just get the heck out of here. So they're going to go ahead and skip the skeleton. So that's going to go ahead and end turn number 10. So let's go ahead and move on to turn 11. So Taylor's still with 16 and Cook has 15 hit points. So Taylor's going to go ahead and continue forward. She'll go ahead and draw the next chapter card and gets, oh, some kind of wolf creatures. You have been hunted by the ferocious castle hounds. You become separated, and each of you must fight alone. Roll a chapter dice in front of each player to represent the hound attacking them. The hounds can sense weakness. Players with less than eight hit points roll two dice instead of one. Begin combat. Well, looking at the hit points, 15 and 16, it's not less than eight, so they're okay there. 
combat special. No player can rest until the hounds attacking them are defeated. They may then help another player defeat theirs. A player aiding another takes damage as normal and must declare who they are aiding before they roll. These hounds are going to deal one point of damage when they attack. All right, so the hound that is attacking Cook has a wisdom. The hound that's attacking Taylor also has a wisdom. And looking at Cook, the wisdom's not good. She only has one wisdom. Wisdom on Taylor is pretty average, so she's got three, but she has two dice that she gets to use. So let's go ahead and find out what happens here. So the characters are going to attack, and Cook goes ahead and attacks her hound that's attacking her. Oh, and that's going to be a miss. She rolls a cunning, does not get it, so she takes one point of damage. So she'll drop down to 14. And Taylor is going to attack the hound that's attacking her. Oh, and she got it. Well, she got two things. First of all, she killed the hound because she got a wisdom. Second of all, she rolled a double cunning, which is a block. So she ended up blocking. Now what's going to happen is the hounds go ahead and attack. And she killed it, so nothing happens there. And the hound caused the damage back there. So now it is the second round of combat. So Cook is going to go ahead and attack the hound. And nothing happens there. But it says discard to apply a single might at any time. Nope. When you would take damage, discard to avoid that damage. Well, it's only one point, so it's not that bad. So Cook's going to end up taking one point of damage. So she's down to three. Taylor is now going to go ahead and attack the hound. It's a cunning, and she gets a cunning. So the hound is now dead. And they will then end up getting one item card. And they get a partially rotten apple. So Taylor goes ahead and gives Cook the partially rotten apple and she eats it and restores one hit point. So she now, from 13, she is up to 14. So we got Cook at 14 and Taylor at 16. All right, so that ends turn 11. Let's go ahead and move on to turn 12. So Taylor has 16 versus 14, so she's still in the lead. She's going to go ahead and turn the chapter card. She gets a ugh, some sludge of some sort coming from holes in the wall. You pass through a chamber which serves as a cesspit below the castle privies. As you pick your way through the filth, something unusual catches your eye. Draw an item card. Okay, well, Taylor's going to get an item card. An elixir of insight. Potion. Discard before any round of combat to change any one chapter dice to show a trait of your choice. Nice. Oh, wait, she cannot have it. She's got a two-handed weapon. Um, discard to apply a single might or no damage change any one chapter. Okay, we're going to go ahead and Cook's going to go ahead and throw the uh, Brew of Might away and then keep the Elixir of Insight with her. Okay, that's going to end turn 12. So let's go ahead and move on to turn 13. All right, so they got, they got 15 chapter cards. So we got turn 13, 14, and 15. So we got three more chapter cards. Then we got the big boss to go up against. So they're looking pretty good with their health, having 14 for Cook and 16 for Taylor, but we still have three cards left, so hopefully nothing bad, really bad happens. So Taylor's got 16, so she's going to go ahead and take the lead here. You ascend a narrow spiral staircase, emerging onto a windswept bell tower. As you cross the tower, the bell swings into life, its dreary peel shaking your very bones. 
Any player who cannot roll wisdom or a double in one attempt loses two hit points as the sound begins to drive them insane. All right, so Cook is up first. Gonna roll a wisdom or double or lose two hit points. All right, so let's see what Cook happens. Oh, nope. So Cook rolls a cunning, so Cook's gonna end up losing two hit points. She is down to 12. And now Taylor is up. One attempt. Okay, pretty interesting. I'm, well, this is not combat because it says in combat. So this is not combat because otherwise it says down here begin combat. So she only has to or only gets to roll her character die. So she needs a wisdom or a double. Oh, no, oh, it's a it's a a cunning party. <laughs> so she rolls a cunning, doesn't make it, so she takes two points of damage and drops down to 14. So that's not good. So that's gonna end this turn. So turn 13 is over. We now go on to turn 14. Well, Taylor is still in the lead, so she's going to go ahead and advance and turn over the next chapter card. And she gets, ooh, three ugly specters, witches. Um, as these three old women draw near, you notice their feet do not touch the ground. With a cackle, they lunge, probing for you with withered hands and rotten tongues. Begin combat. Combat special. The first time the Risen Hags are defeated before drawing an item card, roll a chapter dice. If the result is wisdom, they regenerate. You must restart combat and defeat them a second time. Okay, well, that's not good. So they have the ability to come back twice, or come back one more time for a total of two times. So they're going to have a Wisdom, and then they roll two dice, and they're going to have another Wisdom with a Might. And if we do not kill them, they're going to come back and attack at one point damage. Okay, so our first round up, they're going to go ahead and attack. Ooh, all right, well, let's see here. Taylor blocks. But gets a double. Oh, heck, they killed him. <laughs> so we got one, two, three wisdom. We got two wisdom. And then we got the might from the tailor. So that takes down there. And plus, Taylor ended up getting a block, so she wouldn't have even got any damage. So there's that. Now it says here that remember, the first time the risen hags are defeated, before drawing an item card, roll a chapter dice. If the result is wisdom, they regenerate. So they come back and they regenerate. They get the one wisdom. Oops, come back here. And they get two mites this time. All right, so let's go ahead and go with combat again for the first round of combat. Go and attack. Cook and Taylor attack. And they get, oh, well, first of all, they get double blocks here, so they're not going to get any damage as they get attacked back from them. We get two wisdom, so it takes the wisdom out, but then there's three cunning, and there's no might, so they're still going. They then, the old women try to attack back, but Taylor's got the block, and Cook has got the block. So we go on to our next round of combat. And let's see. Um, now we're just going to keep going. They're all going to attack. And we get, okay, let's see here. Cook gets a block, so Cook will not get any damage done. We got two wisdom, but there's two mites. 
So that means that Taylor is going to end up getting one point of damage. So she drops from 14 down to 13. All right, we go to our third round of combat. Oh, we got one might from Cook. So Cook takes off one of them. Taylor's got a cunning and a wisdom that does not help. So that means that each of them are going to take one point of damage. Cook drops to 11. Taylor drops to 12. And let's go for round four of combat, see what happens. Oh, there's our might. Take down the old women. And it says that they're defeated and they come back a second time. So they've come back a second time and now they are able to continue on. But first, they will get an item card. Let's see what we get. Elixir of Insight Potion. Discard before any round of combat to change any one chapter dice to show a trait of your choice. Okay, that's the other one that I have over there, so we'll go and just discard this one because Taylor's got a two-handed weapon, so she cannot carry another item. And now we'll go ahead and end chapter 14, and that means that this is the last card. Chapter 15 card, so we're on turn 15. A series of long blades swing from the ceiling of this narrow passageway. You study the pattern of their movement and prepare to dash through to the other side. In unison, all players must roll their character dice along with one chapter dice three times. Each time a player's character dice matches the chapter dice they roll, they are caught by the blades and lose two hit points. If a player rolls a double on any of the three rolls, they survive that roll without taking damage. All right. So, Taylor has more hit points, so she would have continued up. So remember, you're supposed to say which character is going to go first before drawing this chapter card. But since she has more hit points, she would have gone first anyway. So Taylor's going to make a run for it. So we can take one chapter die. It is not combat, so she does not get to use this second die from the cracked axe, so she takes hers. So now remember, she's got to go ahead and roll both of them three times. And each time a player character's dice matches the chapter dice, they're going to take two points of damage. But if Taylor rolls the doubles and gets that shield, then she survives that roll. So we get three rolls. First one. Oh, two Taylor, not good. <laughs> Starts right off the bat, she loses two points. She's now down to ten. Let's go to the second one. Oh, she got a double, so she made it through. She d ditches around and dives underneath another blade, and she sees that there's one blade left, and she makes a run for it, jumps off the wall, and makes it. So she ends up with ten hit points remaining. And now Cook is going to go. Oh, right off the bat, not good. Gets the same, so she loses two, goes from 11 down to nine. The next one. Oh, she makes that one. Dodges around off the wall, has got one blade left. She dies for it, slides under the ground, and makes it past. So now Cook has 9 hit points, Taylor has 10 hit points. As we go to the final battle up against the boss. So Taylor has 10 hit points remaining and Cook has 9. So Taylor's going to go first. So that finishes off turn 15. That is the last of the chapter cards, and now we go up against the boss. Who is the boss? And on the card it says, Do not read until you have completed the last chapter card. 
And that's this one right here, chapter card number 15. This is it. You have reached the final challenge. One last obstacle stands between you and freedom. Turn over now. <coughs> the Dark One. Your pitiful trinkets are no match for my dark magic. As you, which is Taylor, enter the Dark One's presence, any items you are carrying, vaporize them. Oh, no. She loses their cracked axe. Begin combat. All right. We've got a cunning one, two, three wisdom. They roll two more and get two might. So this is what we got to go up against. Cook still has two potions over there. And he's got a discard before any round of combat to change any one chapter dice to show a trait of your choice. Okay, so... Wow, that's a good question. He's going to change... He's going to drink the Elixir of Insight and change one of the Wisdoms to a Might. Then when you take damage, which he's going to like this one because the Dark One deals three points of damage. You can drink that potion and stop that damage. So let's go ahead and go at it. First up, do an attack. Boom. Oh, look at that. Cook has got a block with double cunning. Okay, knocks one cunning out. Taylor's got a cunning, but she doesn't have any other cards or anything like that, so she is going to take three points of damage. So Taylor's going to drop from ten down to seven. So Cook has nine and Taylor has seven. All right, next one up. Ooh, we got a... Taylor delivers a might shot, takes out that one. Um, Cook has cunning, not too good on that one. So they're both going to take damage, but Cook is going to use the Ever Essence Evasion Potion and not take any damage. Taylor, on the other hand, is going to take the three points of damage, dropping her score down to four hit points. All right, let's go with round three and see what happens. Oh, nice! What do we got here? Who's this? Cook! Cook does a nice delivery of two mites, but he also, she also gets a block. So she will not get any damage, but this is not good because she's going to take two off from her double mite attack, and Taylor is going to deliver one off the Wisdom. But she also takes three points of damage. Oh no, oh no! So this is it. This is our last attack to go up against the Wisdom to kill. Now Wisdom over here on Cook is not good as there's only one side on Cook that only has a Wisdom. Taylor on the other hand has a double and a single. So we shall see what happens as they both charge the Dark One. They lunge and deliver their final blows Wisdom. Boom. Da, 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 da. Who was that? Taylor. Taylor delivers the final blow, taking down the Dark One. <laughs> and she only had one hit point left. And then Cook. Cook ended up blocking. So she would still have nine hit points. Taylor is just a mess. She's all ragged and torn up, and she's just like, oh, I want to get out of here so bad. The Dark One is delivered amongst the pile of dead corpses as they both continue to the end of the room and push open the door as freedom washes over them. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so that is it. Escape the Dark Castle. Excellent. Oh my gosh, what a, what a nail-biter. Taylor dropping down to one hit point, but she 
delivers the final blow to the Dark One. Now, Cook and Taylor are now free of this disgusting place and no more guards to harass and terrorize them. And the Dark One is no more to watch over all of those other people that are harassing and terrorizing you as they walk out and off to freedom. But, what about the others? Hello there, Jonathan here and welcome back and thank you for watching Escape the Dark Castle. I hope you enjoyed the video and now have a better understanding of the game. So how did the prisoners do? They did pretty dang well. I mean you can see here that there's uh, for the cook looks like uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, uh, let's see, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, all right, Cook, Cook ended up taking 11 points of damage and, and ended up healing up, I think, three times. Taylor, 3, 6, 9, 12, 12, and then uh, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, but in the end, Taylor took him down with that last final blow of the Wisdom Shot. So, you definitely got to pay attention when you're playing this game because if uh, the, the potions are over here and they're out of your sight, you might be forgetting about them to help you out. But luckily enough, Cook had the Everessence Potion that did not take damage. So that was three points of damage you would have got. Then the Elixir of Insight, changing one of the dice, die over to a uh, Might. So excellent choice there, very good. Uh, the tactics they used were pretty much, let's go ahead and get out of this place. So three times they didn't even try to um, negotiate or battle. They just decided to run past these people and flee. So they, they, it helped them out by getting them out of there. Their health score, as you can see, Cook was pretty good. Only half his health was gone. Taylor, she's like, she's like ready to collapse. Just get me out of here. Oh my gosh. So, Taylor was almost dead. Cook is halfway, but that's it. They survived, and that's all that counts. Well, I hope you join me next time. As I have heard that there are plenty more dark castles throughout the land.